All the way over here in the Ironwood area, the far western UP, we really draw a lot of out-of-state users from Illinois, Wisconsin, uh, and Minnesota, and Iowa. And they come up into our area in droves as soon as the snow flies, and we love that. We, uh, you know, our area is very dependent on that in the winter for uh, a lot of our businesses. But uh, the issue comes up is, you know, they want to come up and ride good snow, and um, a lot of them want to do off-trail riding now. And uh, this year, this past uh, um, holiday week uh, blitz that we get every year was definitely one of the worst years that I've ever uh, had being involved with the Gogebic Range Trail Authority. Um, and we really got talking about it because usually, I mean, it's just usually not that bad. Um, and this was in areas where it was just like scratching your head. How could, why would somebody, it was just silly. And uh, we really think a couple things really led to it. I know uh, the eastern half of the UP really has not had much for rideable snowmobile snow. Um, it's been pretty thin. Uh, and a lot of the clubs, they've been if they've been grooming, it's been pretty minimal. Uh, over on our end, we had the most snow for the UP uh, in northern Wisconsin. And it ended up resulting in about a 100-mile, 150-mile swath of rideable terrain um, between the Wisconsin and Michigan trail systems. So you had a really small condensed zone for people to ride in. And it was the first snow really of the season. So, you, and it's this late into the season. And so everybody's, uh, um, you know, they just are so eager to come ride. And, um, we, we think that with the amount of riders that were in our area that really eroded our trail quality pretty quickly. Uh, much faster than what normally happens on busy weekends like that. So we had low snow to begin with. We had a uh, an exorbitant amount of riders here, and then they really didn't have any places to go. Uh, Michigan bars and restaurants were closed down. So snowmobilers typically eat two, one to two meals a day on a snowmobile um, and stop to warm up throughout their day of riding, and they really didn't have places to do that or at least it was uh what we encountered was this thought that people just thought all these businesses were were closed like you couldn't go inside you couldn't do anything we said well no you need to call a lot of the sponsors and stuff they're they're open for you know ordering and picking up food and um you know uh restrooms and things like that so uh but there was just this misconception that michigan was you know just closed down uh, everything was behind uh behind locks so you know, when you add up the, the small area to ride in, you know, marginal snow to begin with, um, and a lot of riders spending more time on the trails than what they normally do, for us, that kind of really helped us explain why we think we had a problem that we uh, did. You know, and it, like like downhill skiing, you got boundary ribbon and people go around the boundary ribbon and do silly things, you know, uh, in, in other sports as well. And it's always kind of that, you know, two, three percent of riders that uh, get guys like me all worked up and we go on Facebook and make a post about uh, them asking to be better stewards uh, to their sports. So, you know, it's a really small fraction of people and was really just a, a, a unique set of events that we think kind of led to this. But um, the problem's been around and I think Facebook and social media has really given clubs like us and other clubs in our area um kind of that soapbox that we were seeking to really address the problem, to really get it out in front of people. Um, you know, we we all, we live here. Uh, these are our communities. These are our neighbors. These are our friends with the, that allow our, you know, beautiful trail systems to go through the property. And, you know, we don't take too kindly to people uh, disrespecting them or, or them feeling like they're disrespected. So um, kind of a, a long way to answer your question there, but uh, um, it was a, uh, a unique weekend, a couple of weekends, that was for sure. Well, like just for example, I have a 25 mile long trail right now that is shut down due to a private landowner um, who had off some off trail riding six years ago. Um, and he pulled our land use agreement. And that should, uh, we were talking 400 yards of trail, 500 yards of trail, and it shut down 25 miles. Um, the impacts are huge. I still can't get that trail back. It's, I'm not sure if we ever will. Um, but the vast majority of the trails here in Michigan are on private property. Uh, and that's for any state. Uh, 
private landowners are the absolute key to our success and protecting them and respecting them is 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 why we have this proliferation of trails uh, across the Midwest. I mean, in Michigan alone, there's 6,400 miles of trail. And um, to our south here where I live in Wakefield, Michigan, there's 24,000 miles of trail in Wisconsin. And that's all on private land for the most part. Uh, we do have the Ottawa National Forest here and um, the Huron National Forest and um, a lot of different public land areas, but trail system wise, it's predominantly on private land. Job number one is usually we have to de-escalate the situation. You know, we usually have a land, I mean, we had a couple of landowners that had private cross country ski trails and over in our neck of the woods, a lot of people are multi-use users. They do kind of everything and they snowmobile. They love having the trail access right through their property, but they also have a private cross country ski trail. So they went and rode his private trail. And um, the first thing we have to do is, you know, talk to the landowner and really, you know, make a, make amends, apologize. Uh, once we get through that, we then have to call our board members, alert our board members. Hey, this is what we have going on. I work full time. Many of our board members still work full time. And uh, we then have to assemble a team and figure, okay, what do we, I mean, it's pretty, pretty standard now. We put ribbon up and signs up and posts up, but we have to go and buy two by two posts. We have to uh, grab all of our signs. We have to load up our groomer. We have to then drive all the way out to this area and spend half a day putting a uh, ribbon up in these two by twos and these posts. And uh, we've now begun putting up trail cameras uh, just to aid in, uh, you know, hopefully deterring riders from, uh, get stupid on us but uh it's quite a bit of work and you know instead of doing an oil change or tightening tracks or greasing equipment or doing any sort of pre preventative maintenance on our equipment we're now having to spend that time working to keep our trails open so you know most snowmobile clubs are full of people with immense community pride they absolutely love the fact that strangers flock to our desolate area buried in snow to come and enjoy themselves with their families. So usually we try to work to get it all done. Um, we'll split up and, you know, maybe we won't have a second person with the, with the mechanic for our equipment, or maybe we won't have a second guy out helping pounding posts in so that we can get it all done. Um, but yeah, when it comes to, to funding, I mean, this was, you know, it's several thousand dollars a year that we're now spending on signage, on ribbon, on two by two posts to put in the ground for, you don't think screws are expensive until you're buying them, you know, at 50 pounds a shot and they're disappearing every year. Um, but it, it, it's costing our club a, a lot of extra money that we wish we could use for uh, trail development purposes or trail enhancement purposes, adding better signage adding better lights to our equipment. Uh, it's just an unlimited list of different things that we would rather spend money on than 400 bucks for a uh, ski hill ribbon to stand the test of the winter winds and elements outdoors. So, um, but we do have extremely good members and, um, you know, our program, you know, it's very important to note that the, the snowmobile program is user funded. Uh, it is funded 100% by the users who operate on the trails. They have to have a trail permit. Um, and that's where we get our funding from. And as trails go away due to these off-trail issues, so do trail permit sales, so then does our funding. And that's that's really, we're not gaining trails in Michigan for snowmobiling. Um, we have it for quite a few years. I'm quite new to this program. Um, I've only been in it since 2016, and uh, we've almost doubled our miles of open trails, but we had 54 miles of trails that were closed due to logging, due to trespassing, and or due to the club not having volunteers to get them put back in. But in the last several years, we've we've definitely changed that. We're, we're full of members and volunteers again, but issues like having to spring up the next morning after you've been grooming all night to go put a bunch of posts up and meet a landowner and, and thank him for allowing access to continue and ensuring him that we're going to do everything we can. Um, meeting out there with our Michigan DNR law enforcement officers or our county sheriff recreational officers is 
Um, kind of the next step here for us, we're, um, we've worked very closely with them to um, set up in these areas on snowmobiles and uh, to try and catch these uh, poor decision makers, I'll call them, but uh, it's a pretty tough job. The trail that we had the issues with that uh, kind of had our viral social media posts go out on, uh, we had a landowner counted over a thousand snowmobiles on January 1st up and up this trail. Um, and that, I mean, that's just a massive number and that's a thousand sleds going through people's backyards and it only takes two of them to, to close a trail down. Yeah. The, 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 the noise issue is, is definitely still there. Um, it, I don't think it quite is as bad as it, what it was, you know, probably a couple of years ago. Uh, but our club, um, the Michigan, uh, trail advisory council for, um, or the Michigan Trails Advisory Council, and then it's the M Trail or something. I, I I'd have to look it up, but we're currently working with the Governor's Council on uh, motorized trails to advocate for a rewriting of the snowmobile laws uh, as it pertains to exhaust, so that it allows the enforcement officers a black and white tool to enforce a good law um, that will actually solve the problem. What we've had now is. Um, the snowmobile aftermarket companies have engineered um, aftermarket exhaust that'll pass the SAE test, um, but then are quite loud when they're zooming across the lake. So um, we've had some smarter uh, engineers on the aftermarket side that, uh, you know, have kind of prolonged the issue. And uh, as such, we're, we're really working um, with the governor's council um, John D. out of the Keweenaw, um, he's another uh, advisor uh, that helped bring this issue to, to the council. And we're, we're hoping that we can get some traction with the state legislature to get this law changed and hopefully officially put one of our other headaches to bed. Yeah, and it's so important to note that it's just like any recreational sport, there's always a small fraction of users that don't follow the rules. Um, they seem to feel like they are... Uh, you know, above them or they don't pertain to them or they're only here on vacation. So they don't pertain to me or whatever the idea might be. Um, but it's, it's really important that just a small fraction of people is, is what's causing the problems. But when volunteerism is kind of seeming to disappear in our culture lately, um, not having enough volunteers in the club to deal with those additional issues as well as that intensive use of the trail system is is kind of setting the stage for um, some tired guys like me and some of our other club members. So we're we're, we're hopeful that the the early season craziness that uh, we kind of see when people are just so excited to get out in the snow, uh, we're hoping that those days are beyond us and we'll have some nice quiet weekends ahead full of uh, snow and busy trails.